the 4090 is already obsolete and Nvidia could be in for some big trouble. Let's talk about it. Are you browsing the no-no sections of the internet and you want to keep your data private or maybe you just don't want your ISPs building a portfolio on exactly who you are for no reason? Well, that's where private internet access comes in. Private internet access is a VPN or virtual private network that lets you use the internet without giving out all your information. And thankfully, private internet access makes it easy to install and use on any platform you would need, including Windows, Mac OS, Android, Linux, iOS, and many more. Not only does it keep your data secure by encrypting your internet connection, but it allows you to also access shows and movies that might be locked out of your region, allowing you to get more out of your subscription services, just like how on Netflix the show Rick and Morty is unavailable in the US, but if you change your location to the UK, it will immediately become available. Additionally, with over 50 servers in 50 US states and an excellent rating on Trustpilot with over 8,500 reviews, you can rest assured that you'll have a fast and reliable connection. So if you want to get a great VPN, click my link in the description below to get an 83% discount, making it just $2.03 a month, and you get an extra four months free, plus there's no risk with their 30-day money-back guarantee. That's right, guys. We got a ton of stories to go over today. And first, starting off with, yes, the RTX 4090 is already bringing in sub 20 FPS. That's right. Basically unplayable frame rates in a recent game. Now, what is the game in question? We're talking about Cyberpunk 2077, except for this time, the game has a full path tracing update. And it just goes to show that yes, basically all of the video cards that we have today are basically gonna become useless in the not so distant future when path tracing becomes ubiquitous. But when will that happen? We probably have a lot enough time guys now where I wouldn't be too worried about the GPU you just bought now but do keep in mind if you're expecting to be running games at ultra settings for the next five plus years yeah probably not gonna be happening even if you spent two thousand dollars on a custom 4090. Now, taking a look at this information, this actually comes from a videocards.com article, and it looks like they kind of froze frame some sequences that were happening during a recent promotional video for the path tracing update for Cyberpunk 2077. And as you can see here, with none of the DLSS features on, the 4090 is getting just 16 frames a second in this game. Now, with DLSS 2, and DLSS 3, they were able to get it up to 127 frames per second. Although I wouldn't be surprised if they're using like DLSS 2 performance mode plus DLSS 3. So the image quality is definitely going to be significantly lower. But yeah, there is still a way to get very playable frame rates in this game. But either way you look at it, without DLSS 3, which for the most part tends to not improve your latency and in some cases can actually make it worse. Well, yeah, these games are starting to get very, very difficult to run if they're using ray tracing or lord forbid path tracing but now let's go ahead and talk about the big story guys and that's that nvidia could be in for some big trouble because that's right amd is already coming out with another new video card and it could be smashing in the face of nvidia but will it actually do it and what does it look like are you gonna actually be purchasing this thing well let's take a look now this information actually comes from the website WCCF tech and as we can see here they have an image of the GPU in question and oh boy is that one big fat load of a yeah there's a lot going on here before we get into any of the information let's just kind of break this thing down here to my eyes what we're looking at here is four plus two GPU clusters and then actually a CPU cluster and some what appears to be memory on the sides. Of course, we won't know anything for sure until we get more information, but that's what it looks like to me. And taking a deeper look at the CPU section, it sort of, to me, looks like maybe 16 regular cores and then maybe some sort of other type of cores on the top and bottom as well. And then we're also looking at what I believe is eight stacks of HBM memory. But of course, once again, We'll have to wait for official details. But if this is true and we're actually going to be seeing a GPU, this mammoth, yeah, that could be causing some serious problems for NVIDIA because what we're looking at here, guys, is definitely a big leap in terms of architecture over anything we've previously seen and something I wasn't expecting to see out of AMD, honestly, for quite a while. But here it is. Yes, it looks like we're looking at GPU plus CPU plus memory all in one package now is this going to be something you're going to be buying for your latest games probably not what we're talking about here guys at least first is for cdna which 
is yes for the data center and honestly it's unlikely you're ever going to need a cpu within your gpu but who knows maybe things will change in the future but as of right now i don't see a need for some sort of design like this on the desktop space but it is still very very interesting to see and we'll just have to wait a little bit longer to see what type of performance this thing could bring because i imagine it's going to be massive and how disruptive it's going to be in the data center because whether it comes to data center or gaming guys more competition is better for everybody so it's great to see the amd is still innovating but now let's go ahead and wrap this video up by talking about some cpu news that's right we're talking about cpus on a gpu channel what is going on you know the stuff guys i do talk about cpus but only when i find it very interesting now this information is very interesting because it looks like AMD's upcoming Strix Point CPUs are going to be using the big dot little architecture, much like what we're seeing on Intel's chips today. So very interesting to see that they're changing their strategy. Now, this is apparently going to be 8 plus 8 cores and an RDNA 3 plus iGPU on TSMC three nanometer now there's a lot of stuff to be excited about here it looks like this information that was posted over on hardware times is originating from red gaming tech so if you want more info i will have that linked in the description below but there is also one other piece of exciting information i want to bring to you guys real quick and it has to do with ryzen 7000 there's been a big issue with it that a lot of people have been very annoyed with and that's the boot times well i got great news it looks like the latest update at least according to this hardware times article can make pcs quote boot twice as fast with the latest bios update so if you guys want more information once again links in the description below but hopefully that is going to be some very exciting news for you if you're on Ryzen 7000, because I know I have a Ryzen 7000 system for my test system right now, and I'm definitely gonna be updating my BIOS if this becomes available for my board as well, as yeah, waiting a minute or two minutes just to get into Windows is absolutely ridiculous. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that Nvidia should be worried about AMD's upcoming CDNA GPU, or do you think it's a big fat nothing burger? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video be sure to drop a like every time you do so amd and nvidia release new gpus also if you want to see more check out one of these related videos you won't be disappointed